So, hello everyone. Um, this is uh, first talk to give here. Um, it's a little bit interesting. Um, so originally, if you actually looked at the schedule, um, you would see that it would be originally given by uh, Aaron J. Prisk. Um, he is a um, Ubuntu member, and he's also on the Canonical community team. So basically, his role is that he is very um, active with the community. I think there are multiple people here, myself, Nathan, Simon, pretty much anyone that has some kind of exposure to Ubuntu community has kind of been able to experience the work that him and his team um, have been doing and you know really working on kind of improving the Ubuntu community for the better and just kind of you know being able to support. So um, his original talk was going to be creating a community for the next generation. So one thing that I first wanted to do here was just kind of introduce Aaron. So I did give a little bit um, of a kind of overview of who he is, but um, you know, Aaron Frisk, um, that's a photo from him at the Ubuntu Summit, which he uh, helped organize. Um, he's on Launchpad, and uh, he was on the um, scale, um, returning uh, UbuCon at scale um, organizer community um, this year. Um, he has been very instrumental. Um, he was doing a lot of work, kind of going back and forth with the scale organizers, really, you know, kind of collaborating um, and working with that team. You know, he's a super great guy and all that. Um, unfortunately, he had an emergency, and so he was unable to make it. Um, but I just want to take this time to really, you know, kind of highlight, you know, such an impact that he's had and, you know, kind of understand that without him and all the other organizers, you know, maybe toot my own horn a little bit here, but um, we wouldn't be able to, you know, bring this event back to scale and be able to kind of be in this room with you all here today. Um, and so if you're kind of interested about what the picture is, um, Aaron and I, we were kind of hanging out one day and we decided we wanted to play with an AI image generator. Um, so he decided to kind of go for the futuristic uh, steampunk look. Um, and if you're wondering why he has a turkey in there with him, he actually has a pet turkey that he named French Fry. Um, so if you go up to his farm in uh, rural Pennsylvania, we actually live kind of close to each other, um, considering um, I'm based out of the city of Pittsburgh. Um, he, uh, he has kind of, He's a bit like Joe Exotic, um, but a lot less toxic, as I put it. Um, so he has a turkey. I think he has some emus. He has a couple horses as well. Very interesting guy. He's kind of who I want to be in 10 years. So yeah, you know, now that I've kind of done a little bit um, of talking about uh, Aaron, uh, why don't we kind of go ahead and highlight who is giving the talk here. So Nathan, if you want to kind of take point, introduce yourself real quick. Uh, so this is my 16th scale, so everybody knows me, but for the uh, benefit of the, th thank you, <laughs> uh, the benefit of the uh, live stream and, and uh, new people. Um, so I've run the Ubuntu booth for 16 years now, and we've been doing UbuCon for, uh, as I just said, we forgot to count, but about 10 or 11 years. Uh, I'm a, uh, I was involved in the uh, Ubuntu California local community team, um, loco for short because we're crazy about Ubuntu. And the, uh, I ended up on the Loco Council, helping local community teams around the world, and I'm currently on the Evening 2 Community Council, uh, which means I get to work with cool people at Canonical, whose job it is to uh, help uh, me figure out what we can do, how they can support, uh, how Canonical can support uh, events like UbuCon, the, the booth, and the speaker track, and help arrange, usually uh, Richard and I um, arrange the talks, and he's really good about working with uh, uh, getting speakers and helping figure out what's the what's the angle we want to focus on this year, any year, uh, and then I work usually a little more closely with uh, Canonical specifically, and so I've had the uh, deep pleasure of working with uh, Aaron uh, for a couple of years now, and um, uh, so I try to kind of put all the pieces together uh, with uh, Richard's help and a lot of other people's help, and get volunteers for the booth, and then sit back and well I, I work at the booth, but basically sit back and watch all the cool things happen along with all of you. So um, that's why I'm so happy that you're all here because everything I do for the Ubuntu community is in support of the community, which is you guys as well. Thank you, Nathan. Um, and so now um, I'll introduce myself here. Um, so I kind of like to consider myself a relatively um, new member um, to the Ubuntu community. So um, I guess a little bit of an origin story about myself. I actually didn't start learning how to program until I was 17 years old. Um, and why I started learning to program, it was because my aunt gave me a Target gift card for $20. And using that $20, I bought myself the book called Coding for Dummies. Um, and now I'm standing here um, organizing UbuCon at scale. So quite a bit of, a <laughs> I guess, say, ascension there. I like to look at that at that point. When I was 17, I was still very much interested in pursuing a degree in sociology. Um, I like to bounce around a lot. Um, but so um, kind of giving some further context, um, you know, I went to college um, kind of 
started out as a computer engineer. You know, I really wanted to do computers, but I found that I didn't really enjoy kind of the hardware and sitting at a cubicle and all that. Um, and I kind of wanted something more interesting and challenging where, you know, essentially I have to, you know, be someone who understands how computers work, understands how to write code, how to develop applications, and kind of come out and go out and speak to people um, and understand what their challenges are, understand, um, you know, kind of what problems that they're currently having, you know, how are they trying to solve the problem currently, you know, does the solution even actually exist, and, you know, how can we kind of use and leverage the power of technology to kind of make a solution um, that's better for everyone. And so I was originally, um, then at that point, interested in pursuing my uh, doctorate um, in informatics, so kind of understanding like the science of data um, and all that. Um, but then, you know, kind of interesting, one night I had a long conversation with myself and my now fiance, um, and also, you know, inflation was bad at the time, and decided that I wanted to instead go into industry. And then at that point, um, I was installing um, Ubuntu, and I saw, we are hiring on the website. And so I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. Um, so I clicked it, um, and next thing you know, I was like, I don't know what to expect. And then I actually heard back from Mark Shuttleworth. So <laughs> I was like, all right, you know, I gotta, I gotta get on that. So, and you know, basically now here I am. Um, and so you might be wondering um, on the slide, you know, what does the not so ancient elder of Ubuntu HPC uh, mean? So at Canonical, my responsibility is kind of working on the supercomputing and high performance computing team. Um, traditionally, you know, we found that Ubuntu is kind of underrepresented in that space. You know, there is a bit of Debian and Ubuntu deployment, but um, it currently is largely mostly enterprise Linux and other, you know, custom distro builds. Um, so, you know, I kind of, you know, taking the problem in charge at hand, decided that, you know, I wanted to create a community around high performance computing on Ubuntu. Um, and so we ended up forming a community team. Um, I guess very straightforward, Ubuntu HPC. Um, and then the reason why we call ourselves the not-so-ancient elders is because most of us are not that old. So, <laughs> um, myself, I was born at the uh, turn of the millennium, 2000, so um, I'm still, it's very easy to figure out how old I am based on what year it is, um, which is quite convenient. So, yes, and I was on the um, UbuCon um, at scale organizing committee. Um, it was very fun being a part of it. I was actually invited to do it with Aaron. Um, I had helped out with the 2023 Ubuntu Summit. Um, and at that point, you know, I really wanted to work with it because, you know, it was kind of an opportunity for me to really engage with the community. You know, I like Nathan, so I like to spend time with Nathan. I like to work with him. So we would have a call, you know, every other week. Um, I think George as well, Richard, you know, really great set of guys, you know, who have been you know, stalwarts of the community, you know, Nathan's been around for 15 years, like, that's really impressive. I was, like, nine years old at that point, so sorry if I aged you a bit, but, um, you know, it's kind of like people who I've always really looked up to and thought, you know, are just amazing people, and it's like, oh, you know, I have this really great opportunity to kind of now engage with these folks. So now that we've kind of gone through the introductions here, one thing that I really kind of want to say um, is then look back at the title of this talk, which is, so what does it mean to create a community for the next generation? And so this was a very interesting conversation that I was having with Aaron, um, you know, coming from my perspective of someone who was born in 2000. Um, you know, very easy, low-hanging fruit there is that I don't really like using IRC that much. I find it quite dated. You know, I'm one of those cool, you know, I guess young kids who doesn't know how to spell and likes having an edit function and all that, and I like being able to embed videos and send emojis and format code using Markdown and all that. Um, and so we kind of got started, you know, discussing, like, what does it mean to create a community for the next generation, and how do we kind of get the next group of individuals coming up, you know, through school, through university, through industry, and how do we kind of make them interested in contributing to open source and being a part of the Ubuntu community? So. And there's another uh, issue, too. So, for example, I, I, though I haven't used it lately, I love IRC. I think it's fine. I love emotes. Uh, if someone gets out of line, you just uh, slap them with a trout. It's just... You know, there's a community there. It's been around since 87. I've been using it since 94. Um, I'm comfortable. Uh, I don't understand social media. I can sort of interact with it. I can use it, but it's something. And then uh, some of the, uh, the bird site exploded. And um, now in the shrapnel and debris, there's other sites. And there's federation, but not. And so, um, so I had a grasp of social media. And now it's much harder. And now I don't. So. Um, well, I don't love IRC. I do like IRC. I like mailing lists. I like lots of things. Some of the new stuff, I don't know. So now there are two things to balance because we all need to be in a community. We all need to talk to each other or we're not a community. So that communication thing uh, is uh, uh, not, well, we'll just grab the latest apps. It's a lot more difficult than 
just that. And so that's uh, one of the reasons that the uh, uh, canonical community team and the Ubuntu community council have been focusing on this issue of how do we build this next generation of, of uh, the community platforms that can uh, keep going and thrive into the future. Yeah, and you know, I think that's a great point. And you might even say like, what is like the impetus for having this conversation? Why would we say it? And you know, let's face it, um, Ubuntu is turning 20 years old this year. So whoo, um, still not old enough to buy a drink in the US, unfortunately. Can't buy a drink in Europe if we go over there. Um, and we also can't rent a car without a fee, which is very difficult um, if you're going to a city where the airport is like 20 miles away, which I cannot stand. Um, that's like Pittsburgh almost. It's impossible to get an Uber or a bus <laughs> into a Pittsburgh proper from Pittsburgh International Airport. Um, yes, so, you know, kind of the reason of saying like, Ubuntu is turning 20 years old. Why do we need to think about this? Well, you know, I think 20 is a nice number to kind of look back, you know, take a time to look in the mirror, you know, that picture there where it's supposed to be a mirror kind of looking up at the clouds, you know, symbolism there, abstract a little bit. Um, you know, this is a great opportunity for us to really take time and look back and reflect on kind of some of the successes that we've had, you know, with the community, some of the challenges that we've had. And honestly, you know, also looking at some of the failures that we've had as well and kind of looking at that and seeing like, how can we learn from that? How can we come back um, and build better? But then I also think that it shouldn't just be all doom and gloom, you know, kind of being like, oh, I can't believe I posted that online when I was 15 years old, you know, or something like that. Um, but also look at, you know, kind of like, this is really a great opportunity for us to look forward and kind of think to the future of like, you know, where do we want to take this thing? Where do we want to take community? How do we want to, you know, be able to build a successful community, you know, kind of keep the momentum going, but also make sure that, you know, we're creating new opportunities. Yeah, one of the uh, tragedies for me as a writer, but one of the uh, uh, lovely things about me is uh, everything else I am, and probably the world at large, is that nothing I wrote uh, and posted when I was 12 and 13 on dial-up bulletin boards exists anymore. So, silver lining. Yes. And so then, you know, kind of thinking about the community of the next generation and thinking to the future, um, the question that we should really ask is, you know, what should the next 20 years of the Ubuntu community look like? You know, how do we want it to take shape? You know, what do we want to accomplish? You know, what do we want to keep doing? What do we maybe want to stop doing? Obviously, certain things um, considered, you know, some things are f feasible and attainable, and then other things are, would be nice to have. Um, but it's a great time for us to really look and say, like, you know, the world's changing. I mean, just look, for example, if like ChatGPT, you know, companies want to cram AI into everything now, so that's very fun. Um, and then also kind of looking at, like, kind of as, you know, these trends in technology change and these trends of, like, you know, maybe the evolving definition of what it means to be open source, you know, how can we kind of be able to, you know, adapt this into the community and kind of continue um, this natural, healthy growth? Right. And the important thing to know is it's not, um, we're not, we're not, let's make a 20-year plan, but let's make sure as we reflect, it's been 20 years, we have all that experience, what have we done, what's worked, what hasn't, and what new technologies are coming along now, uh, and how do we make sure that we are evolving and, and on that right course, because in 20 years from now, the landscape will be completely different. Um, you know, we don't have, it'll be a uh, discord, but in our, you know, retinal eye implants that we see all the time or something, right? We can't plan for that, but we can make sure that we are not stagnating, not standing still, that we are learning and adapting and not just serving uh, the current community members better, but also being inviting and serving new members as well. Yeah. And so now this might be a little bit, um, abstract here, um, but I like, I definitely like symbolism. And so effectively what this is a photo of is one of the three rivers um, in Pittsburgh. So um, if anyone doesn't know this interesting little factoid about the city of Pittsburgh, um, which is where I'm from, um, is that we have over 400 bridges. Um, we have the most bridges in the world in our city. Um, that's mostly because we have the Allegheny, the Monongahela, and the Ohio River. Um, and used to have very um, strong, you know, manufacturing steel industry. And so, you know, needed a lot of bridges to help move all that coal and steel. Um, and so, you know, why did I think that, you know, a photo of say, you know, the Pittsburgh River with all the bridges crossing, traffic's a nightmare by the way, but that's not the point, um, is, you know, what's the importance of this? And I think, you know, one thing that we should really focus on for the next, you know, say in the future is how do we build bridges? How do we create bridges that allow people to get involved in Ubuntu and how do we kind of reach out to communities that maybe traditionally haven't been involved as much. Um, so, you know, you can kind of look and see like, oh, you know, we have like the techies, you know, who like the packaging and all that and kind of like the really, you know, code and engineering aspects of things where it's like, you know, we just love the raw 
technical aspect, but you know, how do we kind of create opportunities for say like local communities? How do we create opportunities for schools? How do we create you know, opportunities for say even companies um, to be able to get involved in the community and kind of be able to contribute um, and be able to kind of spread the philosophy um, of Ubuntu? So um, one thing that I just really kind of want to dive into um, and kind of how we're having this conversation around building community for the next generation is kind of look at a lot of the recent successes um, that we've been having with the community. Um, we've been doing kind of a lot of work, at least over the past year, um, kind of helping um, to adopt new initiatives, you know, adopt new platforms um, with the community and, you know, just wanted to take a chance to really kind of reflect on that um, and understand like, you know, what went well and, you know, kind of like how this is good for us going forward. So I think the uh, first thing that I really wanted to touch on and probably um, also my most popular post on Mastodon by a mile um, is the recent um, adoption of the Matrix platform for the Ubuntu community. Um, so if you aren't aware um, of what's been going on there, um, basically over the past couple of months, um, we've really been working to kind of make Matrix a first class um, platform for communications within the Ubuntu community. Um, why was it necessarily the impetus for this? Um, well, we looked at IRC and kind of, you know, saw some challenges we were having there. Um, with the chat platform, and we kind of looked and started seeing like, where are other places that people kind of want to have, you know, synchronous communication or even asynchronous communication. And so um, we went out, um, looked at a lot of, you know, possible um, chat clients. So for example, you know, there's like Slack, Discord, all that. Um, but the real issue with a lot of those is that, yes, you know, they have the features that like a lot of new community members want, like editing, you know, text formatting and whatnot. But the problem is, is that none of them are open source. Discourse is, or Discord is an open source, you know, um, Slack is an open source. Okay. Telegram's also not open source. That was a popular one too that people liked using. Um, and instead we kind of then looked at Matrix um, and kind of the ecosystem around there. Um, and what we really liked is that it kind of was able to um, present the you know, features um, that folks wanted from a chat client, but also, you know, still kind of was in line with our philosophy of, you know, it needs to be open source, you know, um, and we need to be able to be, you know, contribute to it and kind of feel like we're, you know, helping, you know, push open source forward. And so we started adopting Matrix, and Nathan? Yep. So the interesting thing is that uh, a lot of our, so the uh, planning for this year for scale, uh, it actually took place on Telegram, and a lot of other planning, uh, planning for the British Summit, uh, it all takes place on Telegram, and, and so you might ask, well, uh, why would uh, Ubuntu community members and organizers and so on, why would you choose Telegram? And the reason is because uh, when the Ubuntu phone came out, a Telegram client came out like really quickly, and so we're, uh, everyone at Canonical was dogfooding the Ubuntu phone uh, and the mobile OS, and that's how I eventually decided to grab Telegram, because I wanted to talk with them and get all the insight scoop about the phone project and so on. And um, it was very useful and it was one of the easier things to talk my friends into because of course we're all using text messages and Facebook and disc I think Discord was still early on and lots of things. I'd be pulled dragging and screaming to Discord by uh, my kid and his friends and so on, my friends' kids. So uh, just to play Minecraft. Uh, so Telegram kind of grew because it was there and it worked. It was really decent. It has a lot of great features. They, the fact they've really pushed the last half year and got some really good features. But um, in the end, you know, a lot of people don't want to use it because of the company who makes it, because it's proprietary and so on. Um, and so we had a chance to uh, look at what are, the, what are the alternatives. And so, uh, yeah, almost all discussion um, has c gone now uh, from Telegram this year on Ubuntu to Matrix as far as the high level we're making stuff happen, making plans. And so that's, that's why Telegram. And that's also why Matrix, we, we needed to, we need to have something like that. Um, and Matrix with its federation and so on. Home servers, you control your data, it's open source. It just made a really good, uh, it was a really good proposition. And, and it's getting to the point, client support and so on, that it's very usable, whereas a couple of years ago, I didn't find it so much, so. Plus, no one else used it, so. <laughs> yeah, that was a big thing. Folks didn't use Matrix for a long time. Um, but, um, you know, one thing um, that was very, I think, unique about this, you know, transition to Matrix um, is that, you know, 
when we kind of started moving over to it and adopting it um, as a mainstream platform for communication, um, we found that not just you know Ubuntu as an operating its system itself was you know the only community um, that kind of moved on to Matrix. So you know, for example, you can look at you know maybe say traditional things like uh, you know support. Um, that's a big one. A lot of folks you know like support. You know, you could say, oh, when we adopt Matrix, like we're just creating a support channel um, for the operating system, which is not fully what happened. And actually, um, what was interesting is that we were able to bring over, you know, say, Ubuntu as an ecosystem. So like a lot of projects that, you know, you can maybe consider friends of Ubuntu um, or kind of adjacent to Ubuntu, um, we were also able to kind of bring them over. And they were very interested in adopting uh, Matrix as a mainstream track client, too. Um, and they really looked at it as kind of an opportunity for us to all kind of fly under the same banner um, of Ubuntu. And so actually, if you do go on Matrix, if you access our Matrix space, um, you'll see that it's not just you know, kind of operating specific desktop specific stuff, but actually there's a lot of sub-communities in there as well. Um, so for example, just pointing at some of the, maybe the logos there is that we have a pretty active uh, Snap community um, on Matrix. So for example, the Snapcrafters are on Matrix. We also have you know, Snapcraft or the Starcraft team um, as well. They're sitting up here. Um, <laughs> And then you know, also SnapD as well um, is on there. Um, if you're kind of looking at that little squiggly snake thing um, on the far right side, sorry, or actually now it's the left for you folks. Um, that is our Juju community. Um, so we kind of have the... You, you meant uh, stage right. Stage right, stage right. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> so um, we also have our Juju community. So for that as well, it's kind of more the devops -y, cloud um, focused um, community. So you, know, you could say like identity, so like, you know, um, you know, LDAP, that's just basically the easy example. We also have like observability, so like, you know, Grafana, Prometheus. Um, we also have like Telco. Um, and then some other communities that we have as well is like OpenStack. Um, for those of you that don't know, you know, Ubuntu is very um, used um, in OpenStack. We have a very vibrant um, OpenStack community, so they're there as well. Um, we also have, you know, our loco communities as well um, coming on Matrix. So for example, we have like Ubuntu Portugal, we have Ubuntu Korea, um, and a lot of others um, starting up as well, like uh, Ubuntu United Kingdom. Um, and then we also have kind of the security-minded folks as well um, on Matrix. So for example, like, you know, just people who are nuts about security, love security, um, you know, want to help make the world a more secure place, um, they're on there as well. We also have Ubuntu Touch, um, and then some other sub-communities as well. Um, like uh, our Ceph folks are on there as well. You know, they provide lots of help around uh, using Ceph. So, that was the great thing about Matrix is that um, with kind of that space functionality or maybe similar to say like discourse groups is that we are able to effectively create multiple channels and sub communities that allow, you know, kind of all those rooms to be in the same place. So if somebody says like, hey, I want to join, you know, Ubuntu on Matrix, you know, you'll be able to just kind of have a one stop shop um, for all the open source communities that are a part of us. And the nice thing about that too is that, um, and what this sort of, uh, to give an overview of what the effect is, is that uh, for internal communication, canonical, I think use matter most. Uh, and so, for example, I'd be at a summit or something, and uh, there'd be a group, and they say I'd, I'd pass by, and they say someone would say, "Oh, uh, hey, I was we were going to have dinner or something. I was looking for you on matter most. Uh, why can't I find you?" And, I, and I'd say, uh, "Well, because I'm not on matter most." I'm like, "But you work for canonical." I'm like, "I do not work for canonical." I'm like, "But you used to?" I'm like, I, "No, I never." I do this for fun. I'm a volunteer. So, um, you know, they were on a completely different platform. And so part of this adoption of Matrix on their side that I have absolutely nothing to do with this because, once again, I do not work for Canonical. Um, not that I wouldn't. I just, I don't. Um, the, um, is that when uh, that communication gets to uh, Matrix and then all the employees are on Matrix, and all the community stuff are, have rooms on Matrix, all these projects and so on, because the people uh, who have been working on Snaps or Cloud or Juju or any of the other billion of things that make up Ubuntu, um, and they're getting paid to do it and they're working on it, they are also very, they've always been very accessible, very open to interacting with the community. But they were working every day for work on a different platform. And so uh, now, with them all being on one platform, it's not just the, the rock stars like Ken, for example, who's just always responding on discourse, on the community hub, and so on, um, but also a lot, of, a lot of really hardworking engineers who just didn't consider it, that they're, they're working, they have a job, they, they, you know, they, were, they, were, uh, you know, they work really hard, but now suddenly they're on this platform, they can see the other rooms, they're exposed to the community, 
and they're starting to contribute, and, and they're being more open, realizing, oh, hey, we're, we're all working on the same thing. And so um, I have heard rumblings early, early on that one, that that was uh, something they were saying, and, and one of the goals to make sure that this transitions is to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, uh, some engineer who, who just looked for a job uh, and is doing really hard, important work uh, can easily see that they're actually part of a global community of really, really, really smart people as well, and opening up those communications so that um, so that it's not canonical and a giant wall and Ubuntu and a giant wall and people who use Ubuntu. We're all one community, and that's one really uh, nice advantage of using Matrix um, that we started to see and pushed for. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. You know, once we started, you know, adopting Matrix, um, there was a large push um, internally inside Canonical to start using Matrix as kind of the main um, communication platform. And, you know, part of the reasoning why we really wanted to do that was because, you know, there's been a really strong push to kind of be more community focused, more engaged with the community and kind of encouraging engineering teams to, you know, say, think about the community and kind of create a place where it's easy to get in touch with them. Because, yes, it is very hard when it's, you know, you're trying to give feedback and you're trying to, you know, ask questions or you're trying to contribute. And then it's kind of like you're basically speaking to a brick wall or maybe say even a black box where you basically just punch something in and then hopefully, you know, in the um, private, you know, company chat, um, you know, it's discussed. But now with Matrix, you know, a lot more conversations can happen out in the open, um, which is definitely a great benefit. Yeah, the Ubuntu Community Hub, which runs Discourse, uh, really uh, had that effect as well. And uh, so Matrix is really a force multiplier for that. So uh, on the community side of things, I'm really, really happy to see that because I know how awesome uh, Everyone at Canonical is, and now a lot more people can too. That's an opportunity that Matrix and Discourse uh, have allowed us. And so, now that we've spoken um, about Matrix a bit, um, the next, you know, really exciting thing that I kind of wanted to highlight that we've been um, working on this year is really kind of working to reignite um, Locos um, and the um, council um, that's associated with that. Um, and so if you look at the little graphic here on stage left of the slide, thank you, Nathan, um, you will see that, you know, we've really started having a lot of communities either reemerge or really start bouncing back um, from you know, 2018, the pandemic, where, you know, everything just kind of really got put on pause. And so, you know, kind of wanted to highlight a lot of the local communities that we have starting up or um, really starting. Um, so one exciting one that we have is Ubuntu Nigeria. Um, we got some really um, passionate and excited contributors that came to the Ubuntu Summit in 2022. Um, and they were like, we want to start a loco. And it's like, great, go do it. And they did. Um, and they actually recently had an event. Um, if I remember the name correctly, it was called Ubuntu Meetup Africa. Um, it was hugely successful. Um, and then one of their um, main organizers, too, made some really um, amazing artwork for that event um, and really introduced actually a lot of people in their community um, to Ubuntu, um, which is great. Um, and then some of the other um, exciting ones that we have is like our Korea community. Um, they're doing UbuCon. Well, before Korea. we move on that, because yeah. Korea are, are rock stars, and we could, we could, uh, we could cancel the next talk and, talk and talk about all the great stuff they do, so thank you, thank you to them. It's so fun to meet them at the, at the last two summits. But um, uh, Ubuntu Nigeria came in, we're really excited. I got support from, uh, I, think, uh, I think Aaron and Maro uh, on the uh, canonical Ubuntu community team, and got some support, got some pointers, and um, not only uh, was this a, a giant reason to say, you know, uh, the local community uh, team effort has waned and kind of gotten really slow and we want to restart it, and that was definitely a, a issue for the, the uh, community council um, but in addition uh in nigeria i don't i don't remember the leader's name he went in he, he got a meetup got a lot of interest did some talks and as far as i know uh did the first ubuntu install fest ever in nigeria and it was a massive hit uh, and you would never know this is a new team because the artwork looked great their their production value was fantastic the presentation was great and so uh, uh that's a sign of what what people you know, can, can do. They want to volunteer. They're excited about any topic, including Ubuntu. Uh, and uh, it, because this was ramping up and this was something we knew we wanted to do, uh, the community council got together and uh, was able to reform the uh, Ubuntu local community council, uh, who are, so community council focuses on a lot of things top level. The uh, local council members, um, I've done the work before. It's, it's basically you've just focused on those issues of uh, support and uh, encouraging things and, and helping guide people to resources for sponsorship and other things. How do they get a tablecloth? 
how do they get swag or, or, or what kind of, how do they get the logos to print banners. Uh, and so we've been able to uh, put in place a council who um, in their just first couple months of existing, of re-existing, have done uh, really hard work in, in getting people uh, re-engaged. So thank you for to all of them as well. Yeah, they've definitely been, you know, a huge, massive help. And it's really great to see because, like, you know, I want to form my own loco as well. Um, so we do have the Ubuntu Pennsylvania. I know that was a pretty large community. I still see them on uh, Launchpad. It doesn't seem like they've had a whole lot of activity. Um, but, you know, Aaron and I, as Pennsylvanians, you know, we really want to bring it back. Um, there's I also think a very active Linux users group as well in Winchester, Pennsylvania. Um, so it's kind of exciting to see, like, you know, kind of a lot of folks around the world, you know, just kind of feeling excited and, you know, empowered to be able to, you know, start local communities in their area. And so um, the last thing I really wanted to comment on this slide here um, is uh, that QR code there. Um, that, if you scan that um, using your phone, that will take you to the um, local council uh, matrix room on the um, Ubuntu matrix. Um, so if you have any questions, you know, maybe I'll local, like maybe if you were a past member or a past leader who wants to like get restarted um, or you just have any, you know, general questions um, about starting your own loco or, you know, just getting involved, um, that's a great opportunity to just really, you know, have that synchronous, start that communication. I think they would definitely be happy to see that, you know, folks are yep. interested. And uh, so Ubuntu Korea is also uh, not only started, they have their great Ubicon events usually in Seoul or in Korea. Uh, they've also uh, worked with the other uh, Southeast Asian uh, teams to uh, help help them put on events. Uh, there's, uh, uh, I think it's Ubicon Asia. Asia, yeah, yes. that's right. Ubicon Asia, that's, uh, they were in uh, Jakarta one time. I think it's in India, India this upcoming yeah. year. Uh, they've been working with all those other teams and help, helping support them. And uh, the uh, Ubuntu uh, uh, Peru, uh, and Colombia, and I think Venezuela have worked all together. There's a Ubicon Latin America. No, that's a, that's a cross loco, cross you know international effort of a lot of volunteers. So it's not just volunteer, not just oh uh, I helped set up a new council and they can help people. It's not just that. It's people on the ground who like people who come to scale, for example. Uh, you know you can if there's a university near you, uh, talk to a professor or advisor, see if you can do an install fest or or see if you can do a presentation. Uh, you know, come into a, an IT class or something. Um, it really is the ground roots uh, efforts that helped spread Ubuntu that made it popular in the first place. Locos are just a way of kind of, you know, uh, uh, pulling, uh, pulling resources and, and advice. And uh, so we're trying to get that spread again and active again like it always was. And so, you know, kind of on the topic of locos and organizing events, um, it's really great that you bring up uh, like UbuCon Korea and uh, UbuCon Asia, you know, kind of these community events and even UbuCon at scale. Um, you know, another recent success that we've really had is kind of starting the um, Ubuntu summits. So um, as I kind of like to look at it, obviously I wasn't around then since I was still in high school, um, but there used to be the, sorry, Ken, um, <laughs> there used to be the Ubuntu um, developer summits um, and then starting back in 2022, um, you know, it was decided that we wanted to start doing those again, um, but this time under a rebrand as the um, Ubuntu Summit. So if you look at stage right here, um, kind of the farthest uh, right there, you'll kind of see the castle there. Um, that is the logo for the Ubuntu Summit um, that was held in Prague in 2022. Um, it was the first time that we kind of put on a style event like that. Um, and it was, it was very interesting, fun time. Um, and then kind of then in the middle there, um, this was our latest Ubuntu Summit. Um, that was in Riga. Um, that event was a smashing success. Um, and if you're wondering what the logo specifically is, um, there's a um, freedom monument that's in like the town square in Riga. Um, and so it's kind of dedicated to like, you know, the pride, you know, and the, uh, you know, sacrifices of the Latvian people. And so we felt that when we had the um, summit there, we really wanted to highlight that local community um, that we had there at Ubuntu Latvia. Um, and then kind of if you look at stage left here, you see a bit of a smirk emoji. Um, you know, we'll have some exciting updates coming out soon about the um, Ubuntu Summit um, 2024. So definitely stay tuned for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think we should get Pasadena, right? Uh, well, I, I know it's not Pasadena this year, and uh, I'm not allowed to say, I'm not allowed to know actually, so we won't talk about that. What we will talk about is, uh, so in Riga, I end up uh, giving a talk, and I won't repeat it here because it's online and, and needs a view counts. Welcome to uh, Evening to Summit. But I, uh, because uh, the first one, so I get invited, which is great, and they fly me out there. Um, it's a perk. And um, they brought community leaders from all over the world, all in one place. 
and with it scaled it sometimes uh, from times when it just busy years but in a, in a concerted effort to get people all in one place because it's the talks are great the hall room talks is fantastic and going out to the bar at the hotel after you know getting the restaurant where you just gather and get to know each other and then you go off and you're on emails and matrix and so on and you know you know each other and it builds those bonds but um, Ubuntu Summit, uh, Ubuntu events are very, very, very much like scale. Nobody believes when I say how great scale is, and I, and and then Ubuntu, if I try to describe Ubuntu Summit, no one believes me. We all we all kind of know what it's like here. And so, after the first one, uh, I, I had some time to speak at uh, at um, in Riga, and so I spent a lot of time uh, talking about uh, uh, community and how we all all build together. Like I've mentioned those points here, but I also specifically mentioned Ubicon at scale because to me this is the the perfect uh, way that these conference, conferences should feel like and I go to Ubuntu Summit and it's this exact same friendly feeling um, and yet I think I think that um, a lot of a lot of the tech events don't feel that way it's like uh, it's it's like a big family it's like going and spending a weekend uh, with uh, 800 of your friends Ubuntu Summit feels like and uh, we know here at scale, and Jason doesn't know yet, but but will by the end of the weekend. Um, it's like hanging out with a bunch of 2,000 of your friends, 3,000 of your friends. So um, the Ubuntu Summit is a way, um, you know, just like you all come to scale and see all the communities and all the people working. Ubuntu Summit's a way that um, people can really come in, and uh, and 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 not just see the people that they interact with, um, but also all the cool different projects that are uh, going on in the Ubuntu community. And it, that camaraderie that kick-started uh, uh, Ubuntu Nigeria, and I think, um, I think the Korea team decided to go bigger with their uh, you know, Ubicon Asia, and so um, it's all a work in progress. But uh, the Ubuntu Summit's really exciting. Yes, so um, a little bit about that too. Um, and then something else that we wanted to highlight um, as well um, is new community teams. So, Getting a little close to the end of the uh, allotted time slot that we have here um, for this talk, about 15 minutes left. Um, but just a few more slides. Um, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, 10 minutes, yes. So we have about 10 minutes, um, you know, 15 if we really want to, you know, mess with Simon. Um, <laughs> but uh, what is it? Um, yeah, so we had new community teams, um, you know, join us this year. So for one, this was one that I helped start. Um, it was the Ubuntu HPC. Um, if you don't know what HPC is, it's supercomputing. Um, and so we had a lot of folks who were kind of in the Ubuntu community who were very interested in kind of, you know, using the distribution for petascale, exascale um, computing. Um, and so, you know, basically we decided to kind of all uni unite under this one banner of Ubuntu HPC. Um, and it's been, it's been very fun um, coming up on our one year uh, birthday here. Um, you know, first few uh, weeks was learning how to walk and all that. Um, but it's definitely been a great time. And, you know, we actually have weekly uh, community calls now that are open to the public. So, you know, Wednesday at uh, 5th or now it's 1730 uh, UTC. Um, if you want to talk with some fellow supercomputing nerds, um, we are on Jitsi. Um, and so then the next um, community team over here um, that we have as well is our Rocks community. Um, and so they're very focused on using Ubuntu um, for container images. They're also a very um, great group of individuals. Um, they have some of the star crafters in there. Um, so for example, you have Snapcraft, um, Charmcraft, and you also have Rockcraft. And so um, they really enjoy uh, making good OCI images um, for different applications, so like databases and all that. Um, and then they have this really awesome utility called Chisel, which is great for kind of taking apart um, Debian packages and really kind of fine crafting um, your container so you can get a minimal, small image as possible. And yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much it. I forgot to put the question mark there. Um, but if uh, anyone has any questions, we have about, say, maybe five minutes here. Um, so if anyone wants to feel free. Um, also, we do have some, uh, you know, Ubuntu merch over here. So we have stickers for uh, Kubuntu, you know, Circle of Friends, Mantic Minotaur. We have some notebooks and coffee cups. So, you know, feel free to walk on by if you want to tick some on up while you're on your way out. But yeah, any questions? Yes. Yes. Let, let me, uh, for the AV, yes. let me actually do my yeah. You know, we were trying to get that, that great cube mic next, next year. Yes. No, we don't. So Thanks, Nathan. I'm not in charge of the Ubuntu or Oregon logo, but how would we go about getting that on Matrix? Yes. 
So if I understand your qu question correctly, you're wondering how you get your loco community onto Matrix, correct? Correct. Yes. So um, in that case, um, if you want to pop into the uh, kind of loco council um, matrix room, um, you can send a message there saying like, hey, you know, I'm from X loco. Um, I'd like to be able to go ahead and uh, create a room. Um, and then most of, pretty much all of them actually have the ability to then go into the Ubuntu home server um, and create a room for you. And then they can kind of put you in it. They can give you moderator powers and all that. And then we also have some other utilities as well, like a, a moderation bot that helps protect all the rooms on the server. Wouldn't there be the leaders of the local that have to go through, though? Uh, yeah, uh, preferably. And so you can, you can poke them, for example. If, if that's a problem, then you can contact the Ubuntu uh, local community council and say, um, I need help finding the leadership. Uh, maybe if you're interested in taking over, if, they're, if the, everyone's not there. And uh, you can also get a category on the Ubuntu community hub discourse and the matrix yeah. room. It can all happen uh, at the same time. Right. Yeah, so... Just recently, here, I'll repeat this. I would talk to Walter Lapchinsky. He is a former member of the Community Council. Um, he is on Matrix now, so we're, we're looking to, you know, put a lot of this on Matrix. I would say talk to him and see. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, and then if you are, you know, that does bring up a good question. So it's like if you have a loco, you know, I do appreciate that folks are cognizant that like, oh, yeah, you know, there used to maybe be a loco in this area. don't necessarily want to just, you know, say, get out of here, you know. Thanks for the work um, or thanks for all the fish if you read Hitchhiker's <laughs> Guide to the Galaxy. Um, but, you know, we actually do. We are working on, you know, with the local council, um, a recertification process. So if you are interested in starting up a loco and you can't get kind of in contact with previous leadership and whatnot, um, the... Council can kind of help you out with, you know, initiating that process of takeover. So, I've got a question. I'm I'm with the OpenSUSE community, yes. but I'm kind of curious. How do you guys deal with bridging the separate uh, communities like Matrix, Discord, IRC, uh, Telegram, and so on? Because uh, I know it's been fractious in our community, especially like with the old neck beards on IRC and that fancy new Discord matrix thingy. You're like, ah, oh, noise, oh no. So how, how do you guys manage that uh, as the Ubuntu community? Yeah, so you actually do bring up a really good point. Um, sometimes, you know, bridge, bridging's always been a bit of a hot topic. Um, some folks that I talk to are like, just don't. Um, and then others are like, oh, it works. Um, and so, for example, um, one thing that we've really found that's helpful um, is like bridging, say, Telegram to Matrix. So we have a lot of communities, especially for like the summit. Um, Telegram's mobile client. Um, it's very good. Um, I quite like it myself personally. Um, and so there is, uh, I think it's like t2bot.io. Um, it's very helpful for kind of bridging. Um, there's some technical challenges with that. Um, obviously, it was like a bit of lag. But, you know, we've kind of found with bridging. The big thing that just really helps is either A, saying like, having clear expectations like, okay, if you want to bring your Slack community, that's probably not going to happen because the Slack bridge doesn't really work that well. Um, IRC, we've bridged a couple of those communities. Um, and then one thing that we've also found that's um, really helpful is just kind of explaining the benefits of Matrix. You know, a lot of folks, you know, kind of when you introduce something new, change is uncomfortable. Um, but when you show them like, hey, like you have this problem, you know, maybe one thing where it's like people just like dump stack traces um, in IRC or something, and it's like really gross to read and you lose it. Um, we just kind of find like, oh yeah, it's really nice. Like you can just add like the three uh, back ticks and you know, specify the language format. So, you know, we found that like we don't really want to use bridging all the time because it sometimes doesn't really work well and it kind of degrades the experience on those previously existing communities. But we also find that kind of, you know, First, talking to those communities, you know, kind of gathering, you know, kind of a summary of like the current problems they're having and then seeing how we can kind of, you know, curate their matrix experience to solve those challenges. We find that really helps with getting folks to accept matrix as a chat platform. And the other thing I think more broadly to the point, uh, so we have an Ubuntu IRC council that deals with IRC governance and the policies and procedures and who gets a room and who doesn't and there's infractions and managers bans and all those IRC things, right? Um, some of whom are just as capable on the new platforms, Matrix and so on, some of whom are not and have no interest. And so uh, we, uh, the community, uh, the uh, Ubuntu Community Council approached them and we, we t uh, talked about creating a, um, um, 
oh gosh, I think it's a communications council. Is that yes, yeah. yes, matrix council slash communications and, council. And so uh, that, that uh, kind of not just deals with matrix, but also, um, you know, well, communications with IRC, with forums, but there are groups that, um, you know, that, that, that already are in charge of those. So we get a, representat a representative from each one. And so uh, now we have a group that can, we have the focus groups that can deal with our legacy platforms, but we also have a way that we can deal with what are the other platforms we want, we want to identify and work, and when do they bridge, and how they work, do they work together. And that allows the people who love IRC to focus only on that while still being a part of deciding where we take things in the future. So um, that's... that's Uh, yeah, so we've, we've yeah. got better communication between those different teams, and they're not isolated, and, and they make those together. And it's actually, we were like, we were like, how will this work very well? And in the Ubuntu spirit, it's actually worked beautifully, and I can't wait to see what else comes out, because I need recommendations for these things, because I'm, I'm old and I don't know. So uh, I'm not qualified. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah. that's our time. Um, thank you all so much for being here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bring him. That was a great first talk. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks to Jason for his amazing talk.